Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about store.ipadrehab.com's new stuff, which is the Nintendo Switch charging bundle. We're going to show you how to use this stuff in this video. Mark's getting ready to fix one of these Nintendo Switches that doesn't charge anymore. So how do you fix it? After you get done watching the video, head to store.ipadrehab.com. And then once you're there, you can click search, type in Nintendo and then you can find the charge ports by themselves or our switch kit. So the switch kit has what we didn't have in the video, the uh, USB ammeter for USB-C. So you can actually see with this type of ammeter whether or not your switch charging solution worked or not. And then a charging port and then the chip, the TriStar-like chip that we're going to teach you about right now coming up. So get it at store.ipadrehab.com. All right, today we are going to be fixing a couple of Nintendo Switches. Now these are the Nintendo Switch popular toy. My kids have them. And if your kids are like my kids, you probably have one that has stopped charging. So these can get, you know, sickness in the charging circuit in a couple of different ways. One is that the charge port itself can get physical damage. So that's something that can be replaced, the actual charge port. And the other is a little bit deeper, and that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so um, we've got one here that we can see is only consuming 20 to 40 milliamps when it should be uh, should be over half an amp with my USB to USB-C cable. It's so not, this is uh, a USB ammeter, and we can see the push of voltage from the charger pushing into the logic board, which should get magically converted into a high enough voltage to charge the battery and to fill that battery up with voltage. Is that the battery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fill the battery up with voltage. So that means that the charger has to be recognized. It has to actually make connection. And then there's a charging circuit that usually uses some kind of logic chip, a coil and a capacitor to actually create that charging voltage within the board and charge the battery. Mm -hmm. so, where's, so we can see if there's little or no red current, that the push is there, but there's no cars on the highway. So mm -hmm. something's wrong in the circuit. And do you have any idea what that is? Um, no. It's, I, I know that there are a few different chips on this board that are related to charging. Um, but I haven't been able to find data sheets for them, so it's hard to really pin down. Is there a what schematic for this? Um, not that I've been able to find. So you're just fixing this by sh sheer good old fashioned ingenuity and experience. <laughs> yeah. Craftsmanship. Yeah. All right, tell us your thoughts. Um, well, so reading on like the iFixit teardown, I can see that there's certain chips that are related to charging in some way. It's not clear what they're related and what they do. Um, so, you know, the first one I ever touch, I'm gonna get everything I can that's related to that and start one at a time, see what fixes it. Um, and then from there kind of build a knowledge base of this symptom usually means this problem versus, you know, maybe a hundred milliamps and we can relate to, to what we already know. We know how iPhones charge pretty well, right? Mm -hmm. We know that in an iPhone, there's a port that has to be connected. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of components that are on the way to a USB recognition chip. Mm -hmm. That chip has to validate the charger. And then separately, there's another chip that actually controls the business of charging that talks to the battery and understands battery data. So we know how all of these pieces go together in an iPhone. So you're just looking for similar right. pieces in so this device. If we wanna look, switch over to the microscope camera. Um, so, uh, you know, if you, if you research online, one of the things you'll run across is this guy, this BQ24193. Uh, is related to charging and we can clearly see he's connected to this nice big beefy coil here okay. so um, so you know if by if, reading the board yeah you can see the actual physical you can see those traces running board. to these pins on the chip and those to these pins so you know that tells me that 
that's probably going to be doing Tigris's job of actually the business of charge. Yeah, making that battery charge. Um, and then we have this guy up here, M92T36. Um, and you can see that's that's a lot of um, data yes. uh, information running. Is that um, the TriStar? It seems like that's the TriStar. Um, I know it talks to CPU, um, and it's got you know obviously you know a lot that? of data. Uh, because I once had one of these that had a short on this line right here, um, and I know that's a 3.3 volt line. And when I injected voltage with this chip off. Uh, CPU got hot. So okay. Definitely goes to CPU. All right. So that's a little brain chip that's probably doing some kind of regulation of charging. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the last one we have that um, that the internet says is related to charging is this PI3 USB. Okay. Um, and I can see there's a bunch of chokes here, yep. which I know from experience in iPhones usually means combination of data and clock yes. lines. Yep. Um, and my guess would be because it's so close to the USB-C connector that it's probably responsible for routing or processing or, or some, some part of the transfer of actual data information from the device through the USB-C port, whether that's the, the video output or, or something. Or, okay. Um, yeah. Or, or Whatever Can you it update needs. these things, or how do you get games? Do they have to like suck them off the internet, or, or yeah, you get them off the internet. But when you plug this into your dock, it outputs to your HDMI TV, and the only connection that this device has okay. to your dock is the USB C port. Okay, all right, makes sense. Yeah, I have seen the kids now that you mentioned it. They they do play it up on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I would say. Uh, I don't see any physical damage. I'm going to go with this theory. If this was, if this was in front of me, I'd say um, in my guess is that a data chip would be most likely to be damaged rather than an actual charging chip. It's hard to damage a physical giant coil. It's easy to damage uh, ones and zeros, delicate handling, thin trace wire, some kind of a surge or electrical problem hiccup could more likely damage a brain-like chip. What do you think? Um, I agree. I would go after the one that most resembles TriStar. Yes. So is that what we're going to do? That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Good job, Jessa. <laughs> Print me a certificate. Oh, no, you're not going to take my yeah. flux, are yeah. you? I'm going to need this flux. Oh, oh, no. All right. So we're going to get... So where did you... So you have another one of those? Yes, I have some new ones. And where did you get them from? Uh, I got those from iPad Rehab Supply, I assume. Of course. Oh my God, that is so <laughs> awesome. So these are available on iPad Rehab Supply, unless it doesn't fix it, in which case it's deleted. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In which case, go fish, go find somewhere else. Yeah, these are available on the shelf back there. Okay. Uh, all right, so hot air. So we're gonna watch Mark take this chip off. Pretty readily. Yep, QFN packages are fairly easy to work with. Let's see the dead chip. Uh, it's right there. Oh, okay. Got it right there, sitting just as I took it off, so I can remember my orientation. Ah, pro tip. <laughs> All right, so now I will uh, go over these pads real quick with some leaded solder.
feel like I'm in a Lewis video. <laughs> And we're you gonna suck up some of that blob yes, in the ground. Where's your wick at? It's in the little drawer now. Oh. Hiding it from me. Yep. Maybe a little more. There we go. So now you're just going to put the new one on and see if that solves the problem. Are you going to test for short or measure any of those leads or anything like that? Um, I, if this was the first one I ever saw in my life, I would probably take some diode mode measurements just to have that for future reference. Um, but I don't suspect that there's any short because I didn't see a high current consumption. Okay. Now, does this Nintendo Switch actually turn on and work if you give it a charge battery? Did you did you test that? Uh. Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what? like a noob, <laughs> right? Are yeah. you kidding me? <laughs> I don't think I just like said, "Ah, oh, it's gonna be that." Let's do a video. Very nice. Are you going to do his feet or inspect his feet or what? I am going to inspect. I don't think this is going to require any more solder. Feet inspection. Yeah, those joints are good. Those joints are good. Good and... Good. Yep, I'm happy with this. Okay. Now what? Now we see if it works. All right. So Let's go back to the old yield hand cam. Plugging in the battery and plugging in our charging cable. And we've got... Hey, look at that. Yeah. Which, that's that's about what a dead battery charges at with a USB to USB-C cable. Okay. Um, so now if we want to, to really see, we can hook up the LCD and see if we get the charging logo on the screen. And it didn't have that before? It did not. So you would plug in the charger, and it's it seemed like physical port was fine, but it, it acted like you never plugged in the charger. You right. couldn't recognize the charger. Right, exactly. So this is one where it can't recognize the charger, so you assume bad charge port. But then when you look at the charge port, the charge port looks okay, I'm guessing? Right. Did you actually change the charge port to rule it out? Uh. Does the charge port ever go bad on these? It does. I mean, it, it, it can get physically damaged just like any USB type C port. Um, but, you know, looking at it through the microscope, there's no damage. Um, it, has, it has two rows of pins. One row is behind the other. So you can't inspect all the pins. From the um, outside or right. even from this view, right? Yeah. You, under the port. You really can't. Um, I forgot the piece. Oops. 
but yeah, I, everything I could visually inspect, I did, and I saw no signs of this being a bad charge port. Okay. Alright, <laughs> so this time you're going to know if it's sort of just that extra step. You already know that it is now consuming charging current, so you're hoping to see something on the screen here. Right. So should get a charging symbol up in this corner. There we go. Hey, there you go. So that wasn't there before. That's what tells you, yep, it's actually charging. We can see now we have actual charging current. So electrons are on the move now. Mm -hmm. It recognizes the charger. And you would expect this to fully charge that battery and work OK? Yeah, it would take a while with this cable. Um, but if I put this on, you know, in the dock or on a USB-C cable that was capable of delivering the right amperage, uh, it would charge quickly like it's supposed to. All right, perfect. So this one's solved. Yep. All right, fantastic. So some little kid is going to be back to Super Mario Brothers Smash or Breath of the Wild. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, well done. Excellent. So there you go. If you want to send in your broken switch that doesn't charge anymore, you can find us at www.ipadrehab.com where you can get a quote for any micro soldering repair that you might need. And if you are wanting to learn how to do this yourself, you can click over to ipadrehab.com, click on our training and come visit us for one of our uh, course weeks, or if you're doing your own micro soldering back at home, click over to our supply store where you can find all of the tools and supplies that we use, including the charging permission chip for the Nintendo Switch and get those fixed. We will see you next time.